everybody what's up welcome back to your source for universal news and mysteries i'm larry and i'm glad you're joining me here today because i have got a thrilling video in store for you one that will have us journeying back to the heart of columbia revisiting an event that has sparked heated debates across the internet some have hailed it as the best ufo footage captured ever while others have dismissed it as nothing more than the balloon heard around the world but with new evidence surfacing from the skies of san clemente california the mystery only deepens Look at this, another object eerily similar to the one spotted in Colombia. We've been working tirelessly, mapping out the coordinates, trying to pinpoint the origins of these unidentified objects. And our journey just doesn't stop there. We're going to go ahead and extend this search down even further south, down to Varginha. So let's go ahead and not waste any more time and get right into this one and head back down to Colombia where pilot Jorge Artiega captured a sighting that went viral back in April of this year. Some have called it the best UFO footage ever captured. Go ahead and take a look and decide for yourself. Now I've heard the skeptics out there. They're saying it's just a balloon. And the apparent rapid movement is nothing more than a parallax effect caused by the plane's motion. They argue that the object is stationary, and you know, I'm not disputing this. The object here could be stationary, but a balloon? I'm not so sure. First off, a balloon this close to an aircraft would be affected by the turbulence. It would be pushed away, whipped around by the plane's wake. Now that doesn't mean it couldn't be a balloon. No, there's always a possibility that the camera didn't capture this turbulence. But let's take a closer look at this mysterious object. I've been itching to discuss this one with you guys for a while now. We have two distinct color variations here. I'm going to refer to the darker area as the top of the craft and the lighter, almost fleshy colored area as the bottom. But here's where the things get really strange for me. More than any other sighting I've ever seen, this object appears to be transmedium. It seems capable of moving through water, air, space, and it might even be a life form itself. You could compare it to a turtle shell or even a stingray. The skin or alloy actually reminds me of an orca's skin. It's an ominous object that bears a striking similarity to another famous sighting, David Fravor's gimbal incident. Dude, this is a fucking gun arm, dude. There's a whole fleet of a look on the ass head. My god. They're all going against the wind. The wind's a hundred and twenty knots to the west. I don't want to dude. That's not our LS though, is it? It's all doing that on the When it flares up, it's rotating. Look at the shape here. The disc-like outline, the rounded feature, and the protruding spot. The way it appears to fly on its side, just as the gimbal footage shows, and how Bob Lazar has described how these objects fly in the past, adding more intrigue to this sighting. Some of you may be saying, this doesn't look like a tic-tac to me, but remember, how one may see these objects isn't necessarily how another may. As each individual's consciousness and the way it acknowledges and recognizes these crafts may vary widely. Cloaking tech, gravity manipulation, may have different effects on different people at different times. Essentially, what you see here may not be truly what is in front of you. With that knowledge now, compare this with a still from the Columbia footage. It's almost a perfect match. Overlay the two images and the similarities become even more apparent. These two shapes don't just match slightly, but even the size of the identifies here are an exact match. From corner to corner, it is truly amazing. Coincidence? It is possible, but it does seem highly unlikely. These are the questions that not only need to be asked, but answered. Why has no one asked Fravor yet about this? Could this be what he actually captured on his flare system? This sighting has captured the imaginations of many, and if you are curious as I am, you will be intrigued to know that this isn't the only time this object, or one like it, has made an appearance. 
In April, the same month as the Columbia sighting, another object was spotted over San Clemente, California. Similar shape, similar color, who are we kidding? It appears to be the same exact object. The fleshy underbelly, the disc-like shape, the rounded top, and again the protruding anomaly which is now even more evident. But let's pause here for a second and take a closer look. What do you think? Same object or no? And if it is the same object, then I have questions. Where did it originate from? Can we find out? Well, let's go ahead and do some digging. Let's use the coordinates of the San Clemente, California UFO, as well as the coordinates of the object over Columbia. Now, it was never specified exactly where this was seen, just that it was over Columbia. So let's go ahead and use Medellin, Columbia, a known UFO hotspot as the reference point here creating what I see here as a straight line with its center point or epicenter originating from... Wait a minute. Does this actually show the center point as Tampico? That's very interesting, my friends. Tampico is known for one thing, and one thing only, a Mupak. This is believed to be an underwater base located a few miles off Miramar Beach. According to the lore, this base is not just a hub for extraterrestrial activity, but also a protective shield that deflects hurricanes away from Tampico and Madero. Over the years, the hurricanes that are actually set to hit these cities have actually often changed course, further fueling this belief. This is getting more intriguing by the minute. The alleged alien base that supposedly shields Tampico from the devastating hurricanes also seems to be the epicenter for these locations. But let's push the envelope a bit further. Let's go ahead and extend this line through Varginha and put the coordinates and, well, guys, the line barely shifts and now runs directly through Tampico. I spent a while searching the ocean here on Google Earth for structures and I never really did have any luck finding a Mupak. But now that we have a whole new set of coordinates, we also have a new center point. So let's go ahead and check out these coordinates for this new center point on Google Earth and see what we come up with. As you can see using these coordinates, it looks like it takes us to an area right off the coast of Panama and what appears to be a seawall drop-off of some sort. Nothing too special or anything that screams secret underwater extraterrestrial base here. But if you do move up and over to the right just a little bit, we do see something unusual. Well, I don't know. It appears that either something has been dragged across the seabed here, or it could actually possibly be 10 domed anomalies. Of course, this could also be my pareidolia playing tricks with my mind. Because it also does look like something else too, and don't tell me you guys didn't see it either. So I'm not actually going to spend a bunch of time here trying to convince you guys I found an underwater alien base, as it could actually just be a natural geological structure. What I still find more interesting than that though, is that, that it is still very, very, very strange that these center points here of these two coordinates just happen to go directly through Tampico. So this strange anomaly, a Mupak, is it all just a coincidence? What do you guys think? But let's go ahead and move on to another video because there is a lot to talk about today. Sightings across the world are ramping up to what seems to be some sort of tilting point. And this time, the scale tips us over to Bridgeport, West Virginia. It occurs on October 4th, 2022. A pyramid-shaped structure that appears to be hovering upside down, rotating. It's a short clip, and normally I really wouldn't showcase something like this on the channel, usually short videos have a reason. 
but the original poster here probably had the best explanation I have ever heard for a short video, stating, I quote, I got scared, so I left. And it makes sense. It's not every day we see something like this. Take a look. So what do you guys think? Could it be a trick of the eye? Maybe. But when we zero in on this object, you do get that eerie gut feeling. Whatever it is hiding behind the darkness of the night, you just really can't help but think it has a shape like this. And why is that? Well, if you actually look at the top here at these three lights, this is the area we can actually make out the true nature of the structure of this object, which is obviously triangular. Then it just slowly blinks out. Let's go ahead and take another look and see if we can't spot something we've been missing. Could this possibly be a drone? I actually can't 100% discount that. There are many lenses through which we can actually look when trying to define these sightings. But with that said guys, it sure looks like an upside down pyramid to me. And how is it that an object of this magnitude can just vanish? A very interesting video that I wish I could have had a longer look at. Next up we have what I like to call the flying wishbone spotted over Sussex Inlet in Australia on June 22nd, 2023. Now I've seen some strange sightings in the sky before guys, but this one ranks right up there with some of the most unconventional and odd shapes that makes absolutely no sense as to how it could actually be afloat in the sky at all. If this is actually an ET craft, it seriously makes you wonder about their technological advancements. Now, there is actually one explanation that I'm gonna get to in just a minute here, but first, let's go ahead and take a better look at this video. Any ideas? I'm at a loss. I did see one reasonable explanation, like I said before, which was that this could actually be a bunch of balloons strung together. But I'm still on the fence about that one. What do you guys think? Well, folks, we've covered a lot of ground here today on the channel from the mysterious object over Columbia and San Clemente that bears a striking resemblance to the gimbal incident to the perplexing wishbone over Australia. Each of these sightings, each of these pieces of the puzzle brings us closer to understanding the true nature of this phenomena. We've explored the possibility of transmedium objects, analyzed the trajectory of these sightings, and even stumbled across an intriguing connection to an alleged underwater base. We've questioned the conventional explanations and dug deeper because that's what we do here. Even if I'm wrong, I will never stop looking and investigating these sightings for you guys. The frequency and the variety of these sightings are at an all-time high. It's as if we're on the cusp of a major revelation. And while we may not have all the answers yet, we're certainly asking the right questions. So keep your eyes on the skies, your minds open, and your cameras ready. Because something big is coming, and we're going to be here on the channel ready to cover it. As always, guys, thank you for joining me on today's journey. Until next time, this is Larry signing off. Take care, guys.